Hello, welcome to session number 17 and today's session is a kettlebell workout. So for today's session we're going to do a kettlebell routine. This is one that Kim's done quite a few times and she's used it quite a lot. Uh, I'm a novice with kettlebells, I don't really do much with them. So for this routine I'm going to use quite a light weight um, and actually if you don't have a kettlebell it doesn't matter, um, you can still use a, a small dumbbell. So I'm going to do it with a dumbbell so you can see how to do it with this. Kim's going to do it with a kettlebell because she's very good at using kettlebells so she can show you the right technique. And we're going to do it as a minute for each exercise. So it gives you a little bit of time to transition between the exercises and see what, what they are. Um, we're going to go straight into the routine this time rather than going through all the exercises um, because there's 30 of them. So that minute should give you time to see what we're doing as well. And, 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 and Kim, Kim's going to instruct you through that. And once you've done this once or twice, you'll get into the flow of it and you'll be able to spend longer on the exercises. But a minute for some of them is quite a long time. So it's fine if you're having to faff about a bit between and kind of working out what you're doing. So don't worry about wasting time. OK. OK. The first thing I wanted to do is just very briefly go through a kettlebell swing technique because a few of the moves involve a kettlebell swing and it's important that you get this right to protect your back. So if you haven't done it before or if you're not really sure how to, basically what we're looking for in a kettlebell swing, um, Jason's going to do it, you can do it without the kettlebell at first if you can want. You? Yeah. Okay. So just do it without the kettlebell at first, imagine you've got it in your hands. So you're going to send the kettlebell between your legs and lean forward at the same time. Notice Jason's bending his knees, his back's nice and straight and he's looking forward. And then as you swing the kettlebell up, the momentum comes from your hips. So you shouldn't really be using your arms at all. They're quite loose, it doesn't matter if they're bent. And then as the kettlebell falls, you swing it back between your legs again, you send your bum and your hips back. So you push through at the top with your bum and your hips. Not being careful not to arch your back or lean back because you're going to hurt your back there. And the kettlebell really is just like a pendulum, it's just literally swinging with momentum rather than um, you having to lift it up with your arms. Okay, so it should notice it's nice and loose and floppy. It's barely needing to hold it really and it's all coming from your hips, okay? So whenever we do a swing, think about that. Don't, don't hoik yourself backwards and forwards because you're gonna put your back out, okay? So just nice and gentle, nice and steady. If you've got varying sizes of kettlebells, have a few lined up if you've worked with them before. Um, some of them you might want a heavy one, some of them you might, we'll you'll definitely want a lighter one. I would suggest using a lighter one to start off with. I've got a six, which it's quite light for most of them, but for some of them it's quite, it's quite hard to do something for a minute. So, um, yeah, go with what you're comfortable with. Some of the exercises you can do without a kettlebell as well, so we'll let you know what they are as we get there. Cool. Okay. Okay. Right, we've got our timer. Right, yeah, so we're going to set the timer going. In. I can see it. And we'll have a um, timer up there. Once I figure out <laughs> how to... There we go. Right, ten seconds to go. So our first exercise is going to be a swing. Can we put it down there so I can see you? Sorry, yeah. <sighs> okay, ready? And swing. So remember you just go into sort of chest height, pushing your hips through at the top. Doesn't matter what speed you go. And you should really feel this in your glutes when you squeeze them at the top. Arms nice and loose. And if you're using a dumbbell, you can just hold it at the top of the weight there. Just make sure the plate is secure. It's not going to ping off. <laughs> you don't want anyone's TVs going and um, smash. So the reason you can do this with a dumbbell, if you keep the weight at the bottom, you get that momentum to bring you back down again at the bottom, like you do with the kettlebell ball. And it goes between your legs. Yeah. Hold it the other way. It doesn't. <laughs> okay, nearly on to our next move. 
So an upright row next. So we're going to just hold the kettlebell by the handles and we're going to pull it up under our chin. So Jason's holding the dumbbell for either side and just pulling it up under your chin. You can do this maybe with a heavier one if you're a bit used to it. So you want your back nice and straight again, good posture. You're trying to get the weight under your chin and bring your elbows up high. So this is for your shoulders. Might be working your back as well, depending on how good you are at turning your back around. <laughs> yeah, I guess you don't want too heavy a weight, otherwise you end up sort of straining through yeah. your neck quite a lot. Yeah. So this is about getting those shoulders and back working. Okay, nearly there. Our next one is a curl to press. So we're going to hold the kettlebell by the horns, which are the lower part of the handle. For Jason, he's going to do this in a slightly different way. We're going to do a bicep curl and then press up to the ceiling. So again, you can hold both sides, yeah? Or if you've got a dumbbell and it's not too heavy, you can do one arm for 30 seconds and the other arm for 30 seconds. So depending on how heavy your weight is, I guess. Same for a kettlebell, you can do a curl like this and a single arm press depending on what weight you've got I'm going to keep double so this is one of those movements where you're working a lot of different ex muscles at the same time obviously your biceps on the way up and the way down and again your shoulders at the top again be careful not to do that if you're holding a kettlebell it's very easy to hurt your back Next one is an RDL, so a Romanian deadlift. I'll turn side on. So you want to hold the kettlebell by the handles again. You're just going to send your hips back, soft bend in your knees, and squeeze through your bum at the top. So you can see again Jason's using either end of the dumbbell. So we don't want to go all the way down on this because then you lose all that integrity in your back. You just want to go as low as you can go before you start to feel your shoulders coming forward. So it's probably mid shin for most people, depending on how long your legs are. All the way in your heels, and then you push through your bum at the top, and you should feel this in your hamstrings and your bottom. It's a really good one for your back as well. It's just a good stretch for your hamstrings as well, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, next one is alternate hand swings. Slightly trickier with the dumbbell, but it is possible. So you're going to hold it in one hand, change at the top. So on the way up, the kettlebell's like this. You change at the top. And as you change at the top, you twist it so that it's facing the other way. It's one you might have to get used to. And you might drop it, so just be aware of that if your floor is nice and wooden. Why do you do this wooden. not a normal swing? Just knocks you off balance a little bit, so it's working your centre a little bit more. You'll feel, probably you'll feel it in your car yeah. more than the other one. Because when you've got it in one hand, it's taking, you, taking the weight to one side. Whereas before it was more even. You can see Jason can do it. You maybe just have to slow down a little bit with a dumbbell. Yeah, I started swapping it around at the bottom by mistake. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. next one is a windmill. So we're going to do this on the left first. Jason's going to do the lower version. So you want your, oops, your right, your right foot turned out and pointing away, your left foot pointing forwards, the kettlebell in your hand racked like this or the dumbbell, if you've got it, in your hand like this. So I'm doing the high version, which involves pushing up, pushing your hip out, and then bring it back in. Jason's doing the low version, which is slightly easier, where you've got the weight at the bottom. Same thing, you're kicking your hip out. Try, if you can, to look up to your hand when you put your hand up in the air, and you're just reaching your hand down your leg. If you need to bend your leg a little bit, that's OK, but we're aiming to keep it straight, if possible. Again, it doesn't matter how low you go. If you're here, that's okay. Go with what's comfortable. If you can go lower, 
just means you get a bit more work here. Oh, that was fast. Other side. So swap sides. So left foot pointing out, right foot pointing forwards. Bit of a V-shape with your legs. And then just press up. If you want to make it even harder, you can keep the weight up high and not bring it in on the way back down. Which just challenges your balance again. It's knocking you off balance all the time and it's working your side a little bit more. How are you finding that? Yeah, that's okay. So it's working your side, whoop, your side body and your balance. You can see I went off a little bit there. And that's the nice thing about kettlebells is because they're heavy at the bottom, you're always having your centre challenged and you're always having to work against it. Oh, I'm going to bring that down. <laughs> Next one is a tricep press. So a couple of ways of doing this. Again, if you're feeling strong, you could do it with one arm, which I can never do. So you can do one arm and press it up behind your head. Even with a six, I find that difficult. So we're going to do double arms. So you're going, Jason's doing it with the dumbbell holding the weight at the top. I'm just holding the kettlebell again by the horns and letting the ballpark go behind. So what you don't want to do again here is arch your back. You're trying really hard to keep your bum and your hips pushing forward so that your back's nice and protected. And you're going to try and straighten your arms at the top and lower it down to the back of your neck if you can. Have a little breather if you need to. This is quite a hard one. A whole minute on your triceps takes a lot out of you. And then just get back to it when you can. Okay, next one. We're going to go into a split squat. So knees both bent, slightly bent at the back, and then you're just going to pass the weight underneath your leg in a circle. And as you go down, you're going to bend your knee down. As you come up, you're going to straighten your front leg. So this is quite a long time again on one <laughs> exercise that's quite challenging. It's challenging for your balance. It's very challenging for your legs. So breathe through it, keep your head up. Do what you can. If you need a breather, shake your legs off, go back into it. There's no rules saying you can't have a little break. <laughs> Nearly there. I think a minute of these is hard anyway. It so is, yeah. It's quite good, that. Okay, next one, we're going to have a little breather. Side bend to the left. So we're just going to hold the weight in your left hand and bend to the left, bend to the right. Okay, so this one, you're working your sides again. Get a little breather from something as hard as a split squat. And again, it's challenging your balance a little bit, challenging your centre. So you're imagining that you're wiggling around between two walls. You can't go forward, you can't go backwards, you're just side to side. I don't know why you would be doing that, but... <laughs> you're stuck. It's not stuck an effective way to get out. Canyon. Yeah, yeah. With your arm trapped behind a rock. Oh no, I'm pretty sure he didn't do this. But he didn't. <laughs> That's why he couldn't get out. Yeah. That's the secret. You haven't been doing kettlebell work. Yep. Yeah. I'll explain that reference in a minute. The next one <laughs> is thread the, need, uh, thread the needle again. So we're going to do a split squat on the other side. So right foot forward and then pass it underneath. So you're passing it through from the inside to the out. That blows from people's minds sometimes and you get a bit confused, but. So remember to straighten your front leg when you go to the top. Bend at the bottom. And don't do this on a sort of tight rope either. Make sure you've got a nice wide base because it's easy to wobble over. Okay, we're nearly there. Then we get a little breather again and I'll tell you the story of the man in the canyon. <laughs> I 
I'm sure most people have heard I'm sure they have, yeah, but maybe not the book. Okay. So side bend to the right, so you're going to have the weight in your right hand and just bend down to the side and bend up again. Yeah, the, the reference was the book's called Between a Rock and a Hard Place, I think. Is it? Yeah, and the film is 127 hours. I won't tell you what happens, but it's really good. Not if you're squeamish, the book's really, really detailed. Is it? I've <laughs> yeah. not read the book. I've got it upstairs. There you go, something to read. It's got, <laughs> it's got pictures and everything. You've not really sold it to me, though. It's really gross. Yeah, it's not, it's not going anywhere. It's very inspiring. Staying on the shelf, <laughs> thing. Okay, nearly there. And then we're moving into a, an arm one again. Okay, so this one's a clean to press. So we're going to clean the weight up, which you've got it in one hand. At the moment, you've got it in your right hand. You're going to do a little dip at the bottom and bring it up to a racked position in your, at your chest. So again, for a dumbbell, that's slightly different. With a kettlebell, you do a little twist and bring it up and then a press. Here, okay, we're going to do 30 seconds on each side. So we're going to be a bit short on this side because I was just explaining it. Should I go... Oh, oh. <laughs> this is what happens oh, when you... I'm not going down, am I? Just a little bend. You don't need to do a squat. It's just oh, to get some, get some momentum. And then we're going to swap. So when you swap in with this one, you can kind of do a little twist at the bottom if you want to make it quicker. So don't worry about speed. Take your time. Make sure you're not batting yourself on the back of the wrist. I probably should have said don't wear a watch for this if you're using a kettlebell you will whack it okay next one is a goblet squat nice and simple we've done this one before so you can hold the weight like this it's a bit easier or like this is a bit harder so if you've got the weight at the top it again just knocks you off balance and gives you something heavier to work against if you're holding it at the bottom it just doesn't feel as heavy so you can see what Jason's doing again you can hold it like a goblet or oh. You could hold it like down. that. We're just going down. It's just wherever you're comfortable with again, like we did. Okay. So in our first video, we did squat. Oh, they're not comfortable there. We did squats, and we talked about um, setting yourself up so that you're comfortable. So my feet go a bit wider. My feet turn out, and I maybe don't go as low as Jason because he's a bit more comfortable with that than me. Whereas my knees tend to bow in, so do what feels right for you. Okay, halo to lateral lunge. Jason's just going to do lateral lunge on each side. So if you want to do it alternate sides. I don't know what we're doing. Okay, so I'm going to do a halo. So I'm going to bring it round the back of my head. And as I bring it forward, I'm going to lunge to the side. I'm going to bring it round the back of my head, lunge to the other side. So Jason's just doing a lateral lunge with the dumbbell in front of him to take out again this slightly more complicated movement. Don't trust myself. <laughs> Lock yourself out. It's easier to do the halo with a kettlebell, definitely, because you've got the handles. Just feels a bit more natural. And it's giving you again a bit more of a core challenge when you take it behind your head. It's forcing you to Pull your tummy in and stand up nice and tall and we're done. Front raise, I hate this one but <laughs> we'll do it anyway. You're basically going to hold the kettlebell by the horns and just lift it up and down in front of you. So same it's with the dumbbell. Hard. Yeah it is. That's for... quite, it's quite, you need quite a light weight. Yeah, for a minute. Otherwise you can put a lot through your neck. Yeah. Or you can make it a bit easier you can, can bend your arms a bit. Yeah, so keep your arms nice and soft. I always need a little breather on this one and I tend to hoik it up if I'm not careful and let it drop. So really slow and controlled. You don't want to be going uh, no. strained, going like, like that's an exaggeration, but <laughs> yeah, you want it nice and light. What you do want to do again is keep your posture nice and tall, keep your tummy in so that you're protecting your back. So you're doing that, what we were talking about the other day, where you're tucking your pelvis. I'm not swinging it. No. Oh, 
glad we don't have to do that for long. Um, high swing, so like we did with the swing at the start, with the swing at the start we just went to chest height, with this one we're going up, just in front of our eye line, so not, what you're not doing is going right over your head, because again you're going to risk, you're hurting your back, so you want to be able to look up slightly and still be able to see it. So through the hips still, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So exactly the same as the normal swing. We're just pushing a little bit more through the hips to take it a little bit higher. But your arms should still be nice and relaxed. You shouldn't be using your arms other than to hold the weight. If you are, you need to start thrusting your hip a little bit more at the top. So just continually keep looking up, make sure you can still see the kettlebell when it's at the top. And again, Jason's doing the same as he was at the start. <laughs> What's that? It's going fast. Good balance one now. We've got a single leg deadlift on the left. So you're going to plant your left foot. You're going to hold the weight in your left hand. And then you're just going to lower it and bring it back up. So don't rush this one you're not going to get any benefit from trying to do it fast. And again, it doesn't matter how low you go, or if you can't get your back leg straight out in front of you, you're not doing ballet. Keep your left leg with a slight bend in the knee. And again, you'll feel this in your hamstring, your left hamstring. And it's a good one for challenging your balance and stability. Don't worry about getting the weight to the floor either. That's just acting as kind of a pendulum again. And we're trying to keep our hips level. Okay, shake it off a little bit and then we'll do the other side. So right hand side. Remember not to crank your neck either. You're trying to keep your neck and your head nice and neutral. So you're not looking up when you get to the bottom and you're not looking down either, you're kind of just looking straight. Really good one for your feet as well, if you're doing it barefoot. For balance. <laughs> yeah. Try and let your toes relax. You'll feel your foot going like this, trying to hold onto the ground and trying to work out how to stay upright, that's good. Nearly there. Remember to take a little breather if and when you need to. Ah. Okay, staggered bent over row each side. So this is one we did in the um, juice workout the other day. <laughs> so we're going to do 30 seconds on each side. So you're going to do sort of like a split squat position, but not as low as a squat. And you're just going to pull the weight up with your elbow high, trying to get it to sort of your armpit. Again, keep your back nice and neutral and try and keep your chest facing down rather than twisting up. Okay, swap sides. I put my hand on my leg just for a bit of support. What were you doing? Were you just holding it? Yeah, I was Balance. Just there. Yeah, whatever feels right. I didn't know I was allowed to do that. As long as you're not leaning <laughs> into it. I was more trying to get the kettlebell up to my armpit. Yeah, ish. That's what you're aiming for, isn't it? Okay. Side leg lift. So 30 seconds each side. You're going to hold the kettlebell in one hand or the dumbbell in one hand. And then you're just going to lift and lower your leg. So what are you, you going to say something? So you're lifting the weight away yeah. a little bit, aren't you? Yeah. You're not trying to get your leg really high. You want to feel this down the side of your leg here. So you want to try and keep your hips fairly level and you need to point your toe forward. So you're keeping swap sides, we're on 30. You're keeping your foot parallel to the ground and your toes pointing in the same direction, pointing forwards. And then you should feel that in your... Don't do what I just did then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not doing that every yeah, time. So it's a little movement really, you don't have to do a big movement. 
Okay, next one is called the cyclist squat. I don't know why. You're going to hold the kettlebell or the weight however you want. So again, you can hold it like this, like this, or like this. Holding the dumbbell like a goblet. And you're going to come up onto your toes and then squat down. And you're going to try and stay on your toes the whole time. So aiming for, you can probably get your feet a little bit narrower actually than usual. We're aiming for weight in the big toes. You'll be able to go lower than normal on this. So at the top, you squeeze your bum so it's doing the same thing as a normal squat. But you're challenging your balance again. You're working your calves a little bit more. And you're able to get lower. So <clears throat> it's helping your um, hip mobility as well and your ankle mobility. Okay, we're going to get down to the floor now. So this one is, this is all core stuff on the floor. So we're going to do a kettlebell drag. <laughs> so you want to be in a high plank. You want to start in a high plank, get your feet quite wide apart so you're nice and balanced. And you're just going to take your weight from one side to the other. So you can drag it or you can lift it. And what you're trying to do is not rock through your hips too much. Again, if you need a breather, take one. This is quite challenging to do for a minute. You can see this one's easy to do with a dumbbell as well. Next one is flutter kicks. So I'll do it this way. Do you want to do it the other way? Yeah, I'll do it this way, yeah. So what you can do to make this easier is just use your legs. So Can't see your head there. Flutter, flutter your legs up and down like a butterfly. If you feel your back arching, you can put your hands underneath your lower back, so at the top of your bum, for a bit of support. If you want to make it harder, you can hold the weight above your head and that just gives you something to work against. Again, you don't want to do this super fast. If you're finding it hard, just keep your legs high and flutter them at the top. If your back is coming off the floor, just do that. If you're quite comfortable with this, you can take your feet quite low. But you can hear from the, my voice, <laughs> it's not an easy one to do. Oh. Next one is a Russian twist. So again, if this is quite challenging for you, you can do it without the weight. So you're going to come up into a little boat, into a little V-shape. Sorry, my microphone's gone off. And you're just going to twist from side to side, like Jason's doing. What you're trying to do is keep your back nice and neutral again. So try not to arch your lower back. So keep your knees bent, it makes it easier. If you're really good at them again, you can straighten your legs. Oh, I'm not really good at them, so I'm not going to do that. And you're just twisting in your torso. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> if you're finding it hard, put your heels down and you can still get the same benefit. She says two seconds from the end. <coughs> side plank with a row. So you're going to come into a side plank. Come this um, so you can go on your elbow. Or you can go high and you're going to pull the weight up in front of you. If you're finding that hard, just stick with the side plank. We're going to do 30 seconds each side, so we are going to change in a sec. You can do a few rows and then have a little rest and then swap sides. Remember you can do it like that as well if you want, so knees down if you're finding that hard. And you're trying to pull your elbow up high and pull the weight in front of your chest. Ooh. 
Next one is an overhead lower. So we're going to go on our backs again. We're going to put our feet up in the air. We're going to take the weight and lower it behind your head. So you're keeping your feet exactly where they are, like where they are. Trying to keep them straight. And getting the kettlebell or the weight as low uh, behind your head as you can. You want to get your lower back really flush to the mat. So if that's not happening, we can always put the weight down and just do this with your weight. Just put your arms lift and lower your arms so that you can get that sense of what it's supposed to feel like. like. And you should feel this in the sort of upper the abdominals. If you're not, take your legs a little bit lower. And then you'll feel it for sure. Okay, plank. So you can just do a standard plank here. If you've got a dumbbell, it might be a good idea depending on the shape. If you want to, you could hold it like that. I'm going to do this holding the ball part of the kettlebell. So <clears throat> I've got it toppled over and I've got my hands much narrower than I normally would in a plank. And again, this is just a little bit wobbly. So the kettlebell might move every now and again <laughs> as you wobble. Challenges your balance a little bit. This is after that last exercise. Yep. Not long now. And then we've only got one more to go. So keep breathing. If you need a little breather, just come down, stretch it off and go back again. Okay, our last one is a half Turkish get up. We're not doing a full one because it's quite a technical move to do in one little video. So you're going to lay on your back with your kettlebell or your weight in your right hand. You have your right knee bent up, your left leg flat out in front of you and your left hand flat on the floor. You push the weight up, you come up onto your left forearm using your tummy and then onto your hand. And then you lower down onto your forearm down onto your back okay so that's a half get up so we're just going to do that 30 seconds on each side which we've already did on this side <laughs> keep your arm up all the time yeah or yeah if you want to make it a little bit easier oh, you can bring your hand back down at the bottom but then you've got the press to do again so it depends on what you see as easier but you do it in stage, don't you? Yeah. Rather than it being one movement. Yeah, so it's forearm, hand, forearm, back. And then the other side. We've done the other side. Oh. We're only doing 30 seconds on each side. Okay. We can do a minute on each side if you want, because That's it's quite technical. Cool. <laughs> but I imagine your tummy's a bit sore now. We didn't do the other side. I did. We only did one. I oh, did, did you? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Is that it? Yeah, so that's that's 30 minutes of kettlebell exercises. Okay. Um, you can, like I said, you can do that a couple of times and get more into the swing of it and you know which ones you're doing for a minute and which ones you're doing for 30 seconds on each side. So you can count that yourself. Um, the Turkish get ups, you can do a few on each side if you want. It's the last one. Yeah. So just do as many as you want on each side and then call it. I would definitely have a nice stretch after this. Mm. Um, and yeah, be, be ready to just have a little break in the ones that you're finding hard. It's fine until you get used to doing it, it's fine. And start with a light weight. I think yeah. that was, because some of those, even Front that raise, was pushing it a little bit. Mm. And there's not, I don't think there was many you could use a really heavy one for yeah. and not do it properly. It's because really, if you're never putting it down, you're never having a break. So it's more intense. So if you have, like we've got a 10 and a 16, I couldn't do... I could maybe do most of those with a 10 and I've been doing this for a few years. So just six or an eight what for me would be that's fine. That's about five, six, probably six with the, yeah, with the stick. Six kilograms. That. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> that was good. I enjoyed that. And you got a book recommendation. Yeah. And, a film. and I've never done that before. So that was good. Um, yeah. We hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching and well done if you got all the way through. Uh, if you didn't, don't worry, just keep working on it, build up nice and gradually 
and um, let us know how it goes. Thanks very much for watching and see you next time. Thank you.